okay. So for traffic safety merit badge requirement four, you're going to learn the following. The impact of speed on distance needed to stop, how environmental factors affect distance, the effects of clothing on nighttime visibility, the role of color and shape on road signs, the purpose of different road signs, the purpose of different road markings, and the traffic laws that apply to bikes and motor vehicles. So this is a, this again is another short segment, um, and we're going to walk through this fairly quickly. So stopping distance and speed. So stopping distance depends on two things: how long it takes your reaction time, so how long it takes you to start braking, and what the roadway conditions are and your initial speed. And so what we've got here is a graph where we look at speeds from 20 to 60 miles per hour. And what you can see is that at 20 miles an hour, it takes about 60 feet to come to a stop, assuming a 500 millisecond reaction time, so a half a second reaction time. When you get up to 60 miles an hour, it takes over 250 feet to stop. And so the amount of the amount of distance it takes to stop increases with speed. So the faster you go, the more space you need to stop. And when we look at that, our reaction time has a smaller piece of that. Our reaction time goes from 22 feet to 51 feet. And so it, we, we cover more distance while we're deciding whether or not that we need to break and, and, and how to break. But it's the actual physical stopping distance that, that has the biggest impact on that. So that's what we know there is that, that as, as speed increases, so does our stopping distance. The next thing we're looking at is environmental factors and stopping distance. So rain, snow, and ice result in longer stopping distances. So here we use an example for 35 miles per hour with, again, with a half a second reaction time. Um, in dry conditions, we're between to stop. When we get to wet conditions, it's a little over 100 feet to stop. When we get to snow, a little over 150 feet to stop. But when we get onto icy roads, we're looking at almost 450 feet to stop. And so um, when we think about that, what, what that means for driving, it means that as road conditions get worse, we have to leave more space in front of us so we can stop safely. And particularly on icy roads, people oftentimes will not leave gaps long enough for them to safely stop if they had to. So are you visible, yes or no? So if you're moving perpendicular to the road, you're oftentimes more visible. Um, if you're stationary or moving parallel to the driver, then it, it may be harder for you to be seen. If you're within the vehicle's headlights, we talked about those headlights and what their purpose is. If you're in the headlight, it's much easier for you to be seen. But if you're at the edge of the headlights, it's going to be harder for them to identify you. So if you're right at that periphery, uh, between where it's bright and where it's dark, it's harder for you to be seen there. If you're wearing reflective or bright colors, uh, you're, you're more likely to be seen. If you're wearing dark black colors or dark blue, uh, it, it's harder for you to be seen, but if you're wearing a light blue, uh, for example, that would be easier for you to see. So do the math. Um, so these are different colors and how far you can be seen. So at 60 miles an hour, if we assume a 60, 260 foot stopping distance, um, if you're wearing blue, red, yellow, or white clothing, you are still not necessarily visible at the distance required to stop if you're stationary in the roadway. Uh, if you're wearing a reflector, you can be seen up to 500 feet away. So even though we might be wearing bright colors, we, we're still not as visible as if we're wearing reflective uh, attire, which is why oftentimes when we do roadside cleanup as scouts, we're wearing reflective vests that are designed to make us more visible to traffic around. So. Next, we're going to talk about the color and shape of road signs. Uh, so. A sign with red is a stop or prohibition. It means don't do this. Uh, green signs indicate movement permitted or direction of direction guidance. So oftentimes that's what we've got that says 
uh, this is a street sign. So this is what street's coming up. So it might say Oakdale Boulevard, and that's, that's going to be a green sign. A blue sign is motorist services. So when we drive down the interstate, we see rest areas. Uh, that would be in a blue sign. A uh, yellow sign will be general warnings. Uh, do not pass. Uh, warnings about uh, warnings about uh, pedestrian crossing. So black signs are regulations. So things like speed limits would be in a black sign. So that means do this. Uh, White signs are also regulation. Um, and so speed zones are, are white and black is a good example. Uh, orange signs are construction signs. Um, maintenance and warnings, we often see them in areas where something's changing and, we're, and, they're, and they're oftentimes temporary. What was the yellow one again? Which one? The yellow one. So yellow is general warning. Okay. So things, yellow signs are general warning, like do not pass uh, pedestrian crossing school zone are good examples there. Um, brown signs are public recreation or scenic guidance, so things like Lake McBride State Park, uh, Coralville Reservoir, uh, for those of us local here, uh, Yellowstone National Park. So those sort of signs are going to provide you guidance on something that's a, a recreation area or, or a public uh, scenic space. So signs are often also paired with shapes, and so they, they 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 provide parallel guidance and so uh, in case you have trouble with this, the color the the shape can also provide insight so an octagon is used for stop signs and only for stop signs a horizontal rectangle is generally used for guide signs um, and so when we talk about the uh, the green or the blue signs tend to be rectangles uh, an equilateral triangle is ex used exclusively for a yield sign which would be a, a red and a red and white sign uh, pendant uh, is used for no passing zones, and so that's often that's a yellow and black sign. A diamond sign is used exclusively to warn about the existence of hazards in the roadway or adjacent areas. Um, vertical rectangle is generally regulatory signs. Uh, do not enter, uh, speed limit sort of signs. The pentagon is a, is often used for school advance school crossing zones. Uh, and pedestrian crossing zones. And round signs are often used for railroad warnings. And oftentimes they come with the, the X bars underneath them as well. So we can look at either the shape or the, the, shape or the color to, to provide guidance there. And you want to make notes on some of these and, and just provide a guide. The goal is to try and understand that they mean different things. And when, when you're watching out for signs in the world, look for what the color combination is with the, what the shape is. And that, that can give you insight into what it is. Another aspect of the road environment is the signals that we see on the road. Um, there are a lot of different signals we see uh, that indicate kind of permissions to do things. And so the first thing to know about signals is, is they're generally color coded. Uh, red means stop, yellow means caution, and green means go. Uh, red and green are fairly straightforward. Uh, yellow is a little bit more complicated. Um, it's generally present when you're transitioning on a, on a street light from red to green. Uh, it's that phase where we don't have tra traffic going very quickly, transitioning from one to the other. And so um, it's an important safety feature of the environment. Uh, and, you know, yellow does not mean go faster to sneak through. Uh, yellow means that if you haven't entered the intersection, you should slow down and stop before entering the intersection. Uh, and there's a fine line there in terms of you don't want to you don't want to break at maximum G force to to stop in advance of the intersection, which may cause you to be run into by the car behind you. Uh, but it also means you don't want to have to be able to accelerate in order to get through the intersection. And, uh, and so as you gain more experience, you'll kind of learn where that, that window is. Uh, I will say that many young people tend to err on the side of going faster through it rather than stopping, uh, which isn't always the safest way to go. Uh, another aspect of question you get is, what does a flashing light mean? And so uh, you may see a flashing red or yellow light on an intersection. Um, when we, here in Iowa, we sometimes get those in the middle of the night. So rather than continue to cycle the intersections and, and force people to stop, 
when there's not much traffic, uh, you'll generally see intersections go to a flashing yellow in one direction and a flashing red in another direction. Uh, flashing red is basically the same as a stop sign, whereas flashing yellow indicates use caution and be aware of traffic that might be trying to cross. Um, other things to consider are arrows, and so we get a lot of different arrows in the driving environment. Uh, generally, that means a protected turn, indicating it's safe to turn right or left, uh, depending upon the direction of the arrow, and you don't have to worry about other traffic trying to use those lanes at the same time. Uh, and so oftentimes, you'll most often see them on a, on a left turn across traffic where you'll get a green arrow uh, indicating that it's safe for you to turn. Sometimes those are integrated as part of a a larger light uh, where you get uh, red, yellow, green solid circles in addition to the arrow. Other times they are a special one where it's a red arrow or a red light and then a yellow arrow and a green arrow. Um, the difference between the two winds up being uh, the difference between whether or not that lane is used for traffic that goes straight ahead or if it just goes uh, in, the, in the direction of the arrow. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that there are also other things like red X's uh, that will appear as signals over the roadway. And those are meant to close off lanes. And so sometimes those are uh, when the HOV lane might be closed uh, for whatever reason, or if you've got lanes that switch directions depending upon the time of day. Sometimes uh, going into a city center, you'll have lanes that are available towards the city center in the morning, uh, but in the afternoon, those are reversed and indicate uh, traffic that's moving away from the city center. And so those are those are some of the basic things to keep in mind with signals. Um, a lot of it is self-explanatory, uh, but the critical thing is to keep in mind the red, yellow, green concept. Uh, the other thing to think about, particularly on the, on the uh, signal, is that uh, they're dual coded. And so uh, when you've got a vertical light, red is always at the top, yellow is in the middle, and green is at the bottom. So uh, that's what I've got on signals. Road markings. Uh, road markings uh, tell us different things. So when we look at the color of the road markings, when we see yellow road markings, that means it's separating us from traffic coming in the opposite direction. So that separates us from oncoming traffic. When we see a white road marking, that is traffic moving in the same direction. So if, if I see a white dashed line, it means the, the lane next to me is moving in the same direction I am. If it's a yellow dashed line, it means it's coming, traffic's coming towards me. Um, style, solid lines mean do not cross. Uh, dashed lines mean passing is permitted. If I see a solid line and a dashed line, what I care about is what's closest to me. So if the dashed line is closest to me, it means I can cross the line, but people coming at me can't. If I have a solid line and they have a dashed line, it means they can pass and cross the line, but I can't. Some other signs that we care about, or other roadway markings we care about are things like share the road, uh, where we get a bike on the road, which means uh, bikes are traveling at the same, in the same lane we are, and we're supposed to be aware of that and share the road with them. Uh, that's differentiated from a bike lane, which is off on the side of the road, which designates a separate area where their bicycles are, are operating and they're not interacting with traffic. Uh, we also have things like railroad uh, markings, uh, can be down where that railroad sign is on the ground in front of the railroad. Uh, you've got stop lines and you've also got crosswalks. Uh, and so those are different markings that we see on the road. The last thing we've got in here is laws that apply to drivers and bicyclists. So most, most scouts have biked at one time or another. Everyone nod their head if they bike. Okay. And so we don't always have the opportunity to bike on bike trails, and so sometimes we have to be out on the roadway. Um, unlike pedestrians where we tell them to walk opposing traffic so they can be seen and they can see, bicycles are vehicles, and so bicycles are supposed to be on the side of the road where the traffic is. So they're supposed to be moving in the same direction as the traffic. And so if you're biking, you should be on the right side of the road going in the same direction as traffic. The other thing that applies to both bikes, bicyclists and to drivers is they have to obey traffic signs. So all those signs we just talked about, if it says stop, that means cars stop and bicycles stop. If it says yield, that means bikes and cars both yield the other traffic. 
The other thing that applies is you have to signal your intentions. We talked about turn signals earlier. And cars have brake lights and they have turn signals that indicate what they're doing. Bicyclists also have signals they're supposed to use. Yes. I know. I know. I know the um, the turn signals for the bike. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about the turn signals for the bike. If I'm going to slow down, I'm sticking my arm out, down, away from me towards the roadway, which is kind of a signal that I'm I'm going to stop. I'm going to slow down. If I'm if I'm going to turn right and I'm using my right arm, my right arm is going to be sticking straight out. If I'm using my left arm, a right turn. So it, it, it depends on which direction, which, which hand you tend to use. If you're pointing the direct, if you're, if you're using your right hand and you're turning right, you're going to keep your right arm straight out. If you're turning left, your right arm is going to be perpendicular to the ground at your elbow. It, uh, you should keep one hand on your on your bike. Uh, well, what if you? What if it's a caution? Okay. Um, generally, people have a preference for which arm they use. You could, in theory, use either arm. Um, I tend to use one arm, and it's it's the arm that allows me to most safely operate my bike. Um, and for me, that generally means I use my left arm. Uh, because I like I'm right-handed, and so it's easier for me to control the bike with my right hand. And so if I if I'm using my left hand, I'm going to slow. I'm going to put my left arm down, facing the ground. Then also because I'm going, it also gives an advance warning to the driver who's coming behind me because my arm is closer to their line of sight. If I'm going left, my arm is straight out. If I'm going right, my arm is up. Okay. Your left arm is 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 preferred because it's closer to the driver uh, that's on the roadway that you're signaling. But you also want to be safe. And if you have a harder time operating your bike with your with your right hand because you're left-handed, it's okay to use your right hand. You just want to remember that the signs are a little bit different. Okay? A big piece of homework. Big piece of homework. You guys ready? So in a location in a location away from traffic, you're gonna measure with a tape not a car, and mark off with stakes the distance that a car would travel during the time needed for decision and reaction and the braking distance necessary to stop a car traveling 30, 50, and 70 miles an hour. So you're going you're gonna to take that distance out and you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna use a tape measure and you're going to mark off how that is. What we want you to do is we want you to visualize how far it is to stop a vehicle. So we want you to go through and Using those, using those distances, go through and mark that off in a big area. You might have to go to the park uh, or unless you have a big yard. But that's what we want you to do is to try and mark that off. Um, and then what we want you to do is describe your experience in the Merit Badge Workbook. So write down what you did and what your impressions of about how far those distances are. It's one thing for me to put them on a graph. It's another thing for you guys to mark them off and walk them out and see how far away they are. The distance for 70 feet is not quite 100 yards, but it's almost a whole football. Yeah. 